So this is a video that I have been extremely excited to share with you guys. But first, my excuse for not posting in almost two months again. I just drove my boat from Miami to Portland, Maine. So I am back in Maine on my boat and it was a hell of a trip. It was so much fun. And the twist is I did most of it by myself on the new boat. The boat did awesome. And you know what made it super comfortable for me? My new off grid system. So this video is going to be explaining and showing the installation and the operation of my off grid system that I set my boat up because as you guys know, I, I live on anchor in this boat. So in order to have all the creature comforts of the boat on anchor without running a generator all the time, I had to set it up with a pretty gnarly off grid system. So I'll lay out the components right off the bat for you. 1500 watts worth of solar panels, a 6500 watt sun gold power inverter, AC charger, solar charge controller, and transfer switch all in one, two 100 amp hour 48 volt Redodo server rack lithium batteries. Now this boat had a pretty complex uh, electrical system when I got it. So I'll give you a quick rundown on the situation. When I got the boat, it had two battery banks. It had a 32 volt battery bank. That battery bank was responsible for all of the ship systems, the bilge pumps, the toilets, half of the lighting, the other half is 120 volt, the electrosan, the gen set, the windlass. So these are all vital ship systems that may not be totally comfort related, but they're vital ship systems. I also have a 12 volt battery bank because this boat was repowered with six BTA Cummins engines and those are 12 volt engines. The 32 volt thing was an old school thing that they moved away from, I believe in like the 70s. So for me to go through, tear all the wiring out of the boat just to convert the 32 volt stuff to 12 volts, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be practical. So what I did was I changed the 32 volt system out for three 12 volt batteries wired in series to make 36 volts. Now I figured, and after doing some research online, that all of my ship systems things that were powered by 32 volts could handle the additional four volts I'd be throwing at it with the 36 volt bank. And it works flawlessly. So I added one more battery bank to the equation. So now I have my 36 volt bank, I have my 12 volt engine bank, and now I have a 48 volt lithium battery bank that powers my inverter. And my inverter is tied into the rest of the off grid system. And I will get into that right now. Alrighty. So down here in the generator room, I have exposed our massive bank of eight volt batteries. There's eight of them. So I am excited to get my new 12 volt to make 36 volt bank going versus this old 32 volt bank. So that was some serious work. We got him. Looks like I've got myself a serious battery tray reconstruction in the future. I'll make this nice. Look what the acid did to the plywood. Look at this. It just breaks apart. That's battery acid from those stupid batteries. So this is what I'm dealing with for a battery tray situation. Total mess in here. Like all this is destroyed by battery acid. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm gonna fab us up a brandy new shelf for these batteries. Looking forward to it. Alrighty, so I have all my old batteries out and just because the ship system runs on the 32 volts, 
I hooked up my new 36 volt battery bank in a temporary location with the charger just so that I could take my time building this and not have to worry about my bilge pumps not being armed. So I'm getting ready to wrap it up for the night here and it's about midnight. Up late again per usual. It seems like I get everything done at night. It's crazy. But anyways, this is my cleaned out battery compartment. As you can see, it looks much, much better. And I can paint that. That's just basically the hull. Um, pretty awesome way they constructed this boat. This thing is literally so much fiberglass it's crazy look at these stringers absolutely insane so i'm going to clean all this up i'm going to replace this entire bonding strip i've got my 32 or 36 volt bank rather cranking right away over there it's working great look how bright the lights are in the uh in the generator room now that's crazy so i painted the whole bilge compartment over here and I'm also going to relocate the macerator pump after I build the box for the batteries. So the batteries will hold, the battery box or tray will hold those three batteries and these two Redodo lithium batteries. And I'll get more into those later. I am currently in the process of building my battery box. So far I've, I've cut some plywood to size with the right angle so that I can keep this thing nice and straight and level in here um, and then I have this leftover strip that I'm gonna use to put up against the back side of this stringer so essentially I'll coat this whole thing in fiberglass resin let it dry let it cure and then I will sand down the fresh paint job that I just did so now I've marked out everywhere that everything needs to sit and where the board's gonna end and now I'm gonna get into the grinding part and the fiberglassing and hopefully I can get this shelf all nice and wrapped up. All right. So I'm completely covered in fiberglass dust. Um, essentially, I ground down all the points where I'm gonna need to glass in. All right, so I've got my first piece glassed in. So basically what I did was I ended up screwing it to the stringer, but I coated the whole back side of this board in a bead of 4200. Um, it's like a adhesive, marine adhesive. And then I screwed it with six screws, pre-drilled the holes, made sure there was plenty of sealant so those, so those holes that are going into the stringer are like, you know, totally sealed up. And just did a preliminary glass job over it. I'll fix that up and I'll put another coat of glass on it and then I'll 5200 or 4200 this uh, the shelf piece to this and then I'll glass it in over here glass it in over here but first I will coat this whole board in the bilge enamel to waterproof it I just finished laying up most of the glass I decided to caulk this with 4200 rather than uh, glass it right there and then I glassed all this into that stringer. And then I'll be able to uh, mount all my batteries up. But first, I'm gonna paint this whole thing with bilge coat enamel. Uh, so it, it'll match everything and everything will be nice and watertight. I have this battery just laying here as weight, holding everything down. I just got back from running some errands. It's been a day since you last saw me. It was yesterday that I was working on the battery box. Today, I got all my pieces cut up to make the rest of my battery box. This will hold the lithium in place and then that will hold my 36 volt bank in place. I'll paint it all and make it all look real good. 
So I've got the battery tray complete. Looks pretty good. And I've got my 36 volt battery bank moved from there to there. I'm gonna start cleaning up some of this wiring, um, but I'm gonna get my lithium batteries set up down here. So right now I'm in the port side engine room and now that I have my 36 volt bank set up, I can delete this 32 volt charger. So right here is where I'm gonna put the new inverter. I have removed the old 32 volt battery charger, removed the old inverter, 3500 watt piece of junk. That thing nearly caught on fire one day, it was crazy. And installed my brand new Sun Gold Power 6500 watt inverter. Now, this boat has 240 volt capability, so essentially it's split phase 240. So the air conditioning takes a phase and the ship service side takes a phase. So with this inverter, I am only going to be powering the ship service side because I do not want to run my air conditioners off of this inverter. So just a quick trip from the port side engine room to the galley. Little boat dinner time. Got ourselves a chicken cutlet, some carrots, a little avocado oil to spool that all up in. Galley. And bam. Brings us to a hatch. Boom. The generator room. We have made some progress here. Basically, I've just been working on this thing on anchor um, the last couple of days especially and This is what I have going on. I got the batteries mounted. I built them their nice little Holder I had this big switch hanging from over here for the gen set. This is the 24 volt master battery switch so I had this in my spare parts compartment so it's just nice and clean and I don't need a two input switch because I only have one bank of batteries for that system. So this is perfect. It's just a simple on off for the generator. And these batteries are nice and mounted. I'm getting ready to start crimping all the ends on my wires. I'll get everything cut to the proper length and I'll get everything ready to go and I'll start crimping. So right now I'm behind the main electrical panel in the boat and I am trying to figure out the best way to tap in my inputs and outputs to the inverter. So what I have determined is that I'm going to disconnect one of the generator phases because I only want to power the ship service side of things. I don't want to power the uh, air conditioning side of things with the inverter. And that's how they have it split. You have the air conditioning side off of one phase of the generator and then the ship service size off, side off of the other. So ship service is everything except for the air conditioning. So I only want to power necessities off of the inverter, not air conditioning. So the way I'm setting this up is so that when I start my generator, my generator will still supply power to the AC side of the panel, but it will not supply power to the ship service side of the panel. Rather, it'll supply power to the inverter and the inverter will decide whether it wants to power the ship service off of the batteries or if the generator is running, it'll, recogni it'll recognize that and it'll switch over to bypass mode where it's essentially taking the power from the generator, passing it through the inverter, and then sending it to the ship service side while also charging the batteries with the built-in AC charger. I know that's a lot of information, Essentially, this inverter is a transfer switch. So when it sees power, it uses that power to charge the batteries, and then it sends that power to your load. Um, so you're not draining your batteries when you have grid service available. So I'm gonna get it all hooked up nice uh, for testing, and then I'm going to take it back apart and install thicker gauge wire. This is all I have right now, 10 gauge, which is really fine, but I want to use something thicker, like like what the shore power inputs are, probably six or four gauge. 
and uh, from there we will be good to go. So I have everything connected to the inverter side, my input, my output running into my panel, my 48 volts coming in from the batteries in the generator room, and now it's time to put the front panel slash screen back on and finish some soldering that I have to do back here. And then it's time for a test run. I'd say it's either gonna work or it's gonna blow up. So hopefully it works. What you're looking at right here is two Redodo 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium batteries. These are the solar rack style batteries. So it was really hard for me to decide what I wanted to do for the battery setup. Did I wanna go lithium? Because lithium batteries are really expensive, but I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm so happy I did and why they're just totally worth the money. It's night and day compared to, to lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries, you can really only use 50% of their capacity because as soon as you drain them below 50%, you're essentially destroying your batteries. Their life is going down the drain at that point. What's really cool about the lithium batteries, especially the Redodo lithium batteries, is that when they're almost completely dead, they're still putting out 48 volts, and you can use over 80% of their capacity before the battery management system shuts the batteries off, and the battery management system shuts them off so that they can't get damaged. So you're never doing damage to your batteries if you drain them down completely. But if you were to think about it logically, a 200 amp hour battery bank that's lead acid, you can really only use 100 amp hours of that. A 200 amp hour lithium battery bank, you can use almost the entire 200 amp hours. So it really, really makes a huge difference. As you can see, these are wired in parallel. So the, 40, the 48 volts is still 48 volts and the 100 amp hours is 200 amp hours. So you might be thinking 200 amp hours, that ain't shit. By doing some simple math, I can tell you that this battery bank right here, 48 volts, 200 amp hours, is equivalent to a 800 amp hour, 12 volt system. So when you're choosing your batteries, you really have a lot of options. This was the hardest thing for me to figure out. But I ended up talking to Redodo, and they sent me one of these two server rack batteries for free. And I bought the other one because they were really curious to see how I would like them and it just worked out perfect. So I know the quality might be lacking a little bit here, but I wanted to go into some details regarding these batteries. So these batteries have a 100 amp hour BMS. The BMS is the battery management system. It's basically what connects each cell of these lithium batteries together and then sends the cells that are wired in series out to your to your connection terminals. So 100 amp hour BMS, that's an important detail of these batteries. Obviously they call them 48 volt batteries, but there is a variance here based on level of charge. All these readings are taken when the battery is not connected to anything. So there's no, um, there's no load on the batteries whatsoever and they've been sitting for a little while. So when these batteries are 100% charge, they're gonna read approximately 50.6 volts. Now, what I really like is as you go down all the way to 10% charge, they're still at 48 volts. And then once they get down below 10% is when it really starts to drop off and you risk your BMS killing, killing your power because they wanna protect the cells. I thought that was really neat. You can charge these. Um, it's, they're recommended to be charged at 20 amps, but you can charge them at up to 50 amps. So you can connect up to four of these batteries in parallel. I only have uh, two of them connected and you cannot connect them in series, but I can't imagine why you would want um, 80, what, 96 volts if you connected two of these in series. So they also give you uh, parameters for charging. So you don't overcharge or over discharge your batteries and uh, the charging voltages. I was actually able to set my inverter up perfectly to, uh, to work with these batteries. So that's my little spiel on these Redodo batteries. Um, I don't have much experience with any other brand of lithium battery, but I must say, super impressed with these batteries. I have been able to run my boat 
nonstop. I mean, the solar charges the batteries up and the boat discharges them and they've never died. Finally, I am mounting the solar panels, or should I say we are mounting the solar panels. Micah is here helping me. So these solar panels have been laying on the flybridge for like two months now, and this one suffered a casualty one night when Mr. Sportfish went by doing 40 knots and totally earthquaked my little home here. And uh, yeah, but anyways, we got the three up. I've got this fancy rail system and it's all zip tied in place and labeled for where I need to drill holes for my clamps and it should be pretty cool so we're gonna get this mounted up measured wired and this is the last step for the off-grid pretty exciting hey Gus how much do you pay your camera crew to follow you around all day oh you know yard house margarita <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get free shit <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. How many? How many did you get? You got you got four. This is like forty dollars worth of U-bolts at Ace Hardware in Miami Beach. Oh my god. That's gosh. what you get for uh, shopping in Miami Beach. And I and I just bought some lumber, uh, some some studs, two by four at Pine, uh, about this much, and it's fifty dollars just for this little sample here. Miami Beach's two by fours are like their girls. They're poor quality and they cost a lot of money. <laughs> We're gonna eject a uh, 1970s Volvo Penta out of my sailboat. It's been a project that's been long coming. Uh, so we're gonna get some good footage on that. And Gus has been kind enough to trade me some work. I'm helping him with uh, little things here and there. And then we're gonna take his boat up to North Carolina and then in return he's going to help me uh, dispose of a diesel motor with this nifty little crane that's probably gonna break halfway through. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out but better than lifting it by hand. Yeah that thing lifted a jet ski. It'll be all right. Stamp of approval. Let me just stand on a swiveling chair on the flybridge of a boat. Don't forget above the uh, shattered glass. Above shattered glass with sharp edges everywhere. There you go. Nailed it. I tend to, uh, you know, I planned it like this. This is this all in the plan. Would you say that you're in too deep? I mean, if I fall off this, I will be. <laughs> no, I'm always in too deep. Just spit on it. Flyer in my toe. <laughs> Thank you. Stupid fat hobbit says ruins it. Oh, oh this dude is tight in here. Look, you ever seen the blood wasps? There's plenty of them in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I got a whole collection. Did they, pay, right. did they pay you rent? I don't know what it should be though. Back over here on the aft section of the batteries, you're gonna see these two things. On your right, with the red wire connected to it, is a fuse. That is just a 250 amp uh, bus fuse that is connected straight, you know, through the positive of the 48 volt bank. Now back here, you will see this weird looking thing. That is a shunt. So the red wire is just powering the shunt. This wire is before the shunt and it's just grounding my 48 volt batteries to the rest of the ship. And this is the input to the inverter, the negative input to the inverter. So what this shunt gives me the ability to do is to monitor all of the incoming and outbound current to and from these batteries. 
And I'm gonna bring you up to the salon now to show you. But first, I will bring you back yonder. And don't mind all this wiring hanging down. This is all previous owner crap that I haven't quite gotten to yet. But everything that I do, I try to keep, you know, pretty nice. And, you know, I redid some of this just because I couldn't handle um, looking at all this mess, which it's still a lot, but I have a functional system here. These are three interstate AGM batteries wired in series to make 36 volts and connected to them for charging. I have a three bank 12 volt battery charger. So out of this charger comes three banks of charging and I am charging these batteries that are wired in series. I'm charging them in parallel. So each one is getting an individual 12 volts. Now I'll explain to you why I did that because my gen set, which this is the master switch for, runs off of 24 volts. So I only need two of these three batteries in series to produce my 24 volts to run the gen set. And that is also the exact case with the windlass. The windlass also only takes 24 volts. So when I'm running my windlass or cranking my gen set, I'm only draining two of the three batteries here, but the rest of the boat's running off of all three. So I'm discharging these, I'm discharging this bank unevenly, which is where the, the three bank charger comes in. It's giving each battery what it needs, when it needs it, and you're not just juicing a bunch of power into three batteries at once. So let's walk on up to the salon. So right at the lower helm here, you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice my shunt display. You're gonna notice that it says 49.8 volts and I'm discharging 6.85 in that area amps, 340 watts. And it's also going to show the state of charge of my battery bank. So right now the sun's starting to go down and it's behind clouds. So it's not very bright out here, which is why you don't see an incoming charge current. But normally when, when there's sun blasting down on the solar panels, uh, this thing will be blinking and the batteries will be charging. Back to the engine room. So, through all of the running here, there, and everywhere else, these are the wires that come from the solar panels. My solar panels have a nominal output voltage of about 50 volts. So I have them wired in series to input 150 volts into this inverter. As you can see, it still says the sun's out and we're charging just a little bit, even though the sunlight's not strong. By the way, nobody sent me anything for free from these guys. I tried and I emailed them, but they weren't having it. So I bought this bad Larry. I want to say she was somewhere in the realm of like 13, 1400 bucks. But anyways, one of these is AC input. One of these is AC output. When I start the generator, the inverter sees power coming from the generator. It automatically switches the load to generator power and the batteries start to charge via the AC charger that's built into this thing. Now, when I'm not running the generator, there is no voltage coming into the AC input. There is only inverter voltage from the batteries. There's only inverter output voltage coming out and that is powering the load. So now let's go to the flybridge and I'll show you my solar panels. So this is a part of the system that I'm not exactly too ecstatic about. I mounted my solar panels on top of what was once a Bimini frame before it got destroyed in the hurricane and then I reconstructed it and here she is. So don't expect this to be a permanent thing on this boat because it's not. This is because I was tired of running my generator and I needed to get these panels mounted. But let me tell you, they're secure with my two by fours and ratchet straps holding them up. So you don't normally need these two by fours and these ratchet straps here holding this thing up, but I've been running offshore the last couple days, heading north in the boat, and I did not like how these were swaying all over the place, and I did not want to lose them. So this is the top view of the panels. These are three 475 watt, mono, I think they're called monofilament or something, solar panels. And 
So these solar panels produce 475 watts each, giving me almost a whopping 1500 watts of power at peak sunlight. And I really like these panels. They've, they've been kick-ass. They're pretty inexpensive in Miami. I got them used. They were some sort of government surplus panels, um, but I'm happy with them. They're, they're working good. I had to run the wires through the flybridge, down the chase into the engine room, which sounds simple, but there's a lot of other crap jammed in there, like hydraulic steering lines and things of that nature. So a couple things I want to add. My three bank battery charger that charges the three 12 volt batteries that are wired in series to make 36 volts to power the ship systems now runs off of the inverter. So my 48 volt lithium batteries are not only powering the entire house, the fridges and everything 24 seven, but they are also charging my 36 volt battery bank, which powers all the ship systems. If any of you guys are looking to set your own off-grid system up, whether it be for your boat, your RV, your house, or anything, I really encourage you to check out Redodo's website. I'll pin them in the comments and uh, you can check them out. You can also click my referral link and get some money off. I don't know exactly how much, but you get a little discount with it. So I think that pretty much completely wraps up my off-grid boat setup video. I hope it didn't bore you guys. I know it was pretty hard for me to sit down and listen to myself talk for 30 minutes, but I hope you guys found this informative and interesting. And the next video to come will be me driving the boat, using this system, enjoying the boat, and most exciting of all, heading north. As always, thanks for watching. If you like the videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, next Friday, I'll be posting. Stay tuned. Until then, Peace out.